Okay, so uh, hello everyone and thank you for coming. We are uh, expecting more uh, uh, people still. We apologize for, for starting at a delay. Um, but I guess I'll just start by saying a few uh, words and introducing some of our speakers for the rest of the day. And uh, while I talk, uh, uh, people will probably uh, join and also uh, later. Um, so uh, so uh, when I was uh, a PhD student in ecology and evolution and biology at Princeton, uh, I felt that the kinds of uh, mathematical models we had in our field were not suitable for examining some important questions. Um, so, so then I, I picked up a textbook in computer, in computer science called Computational Complexity uh, that was written by one of our uh, guests today um, and then, then formed a collaboration with the computer scientists uh, at Princeton uh, where we started looking at uh, using tools of theoretical computer science to examine uh, the structure of an evolving uh, decision-making system from an evolutionary angle. Uh, and uh, I never dreamed at that time that one day I'll be uh, working with the author of that textbook uh, that I was uh, uh, looking at. And also never dreamed that one day we would be having conferences and workshops on this uh, topic. Uh, to be clear, um, that the topic uh, uh, we're dealing with is not um, uh, the application of algorithms to problems in evolution like phylogenetics or genome assembly but actually using the computational lens to think about fundamental conceptual problems and evolution. Uh, and this recent interdisciplinary area is very important, I believe. So I want to say just briefly a few words about why. Uh, and this answer was already given in a brief comment in the seminal paper by one of our guests today, Leslie Valiant, um, uh, who, who basically uh, very correctly uh, explained uh, that um, in, in our field of evolutionary theory, we often, the models do a kind of bookkeeping of genotype and allele frequencies. Uh, so we ask questions like how long it takes an allele to spread in the population or what, how much genetic variation we expect to see in nature given parameters such as population size, mutation rate, recombination rate, selection coefficient, and so on. Um, and this, this has generated 100 years of, of very important, uh, of, of many results, including very important ones. But these classical models uh, do not uh, normally incorporate a representation of structure, of biological structure, which is supposed to evolve. Um, so, so in fact, uh, there are fundamental uh, questions that these models cannot answer. Even if we formalize a question about uh, population mean fitness measure defined in these models, it cannot, even if we show that it increases, we still have a big disconnect here with, where we cannot answer a question like, does complex biological structure, uh, how does it evolve? And how long does it take uh, for it to evolve? Uh, so some of the most important questions in our field have not been quantified, and this is precisely why we need theoretical computer scientists to consider Evolutionary theory is an area that's ripe for discovery. And uh, the potential of this particular connection is clear. So uh, both theoretical computer scientists and evolutionary biologists are deeply interested in complexity. Yet the mathematical tools of evolutionary theory, uh, they, are, uh, they are like the tools that existed in, in physics and statistics. And perhaps this is a historical contingency, but modern evolutionary biology started taking off in the 90s, 20s, and 30s, um, um, whereas the field of computer science had its explosion later. And this created a certain gap where evolutionary biologists have been so interested in complexity, yet rather little aware that so much effort has been uh, put into quantifying and understanding complex structure in another field. So this is perhaps one way of seeing the great potential in this particular connection of two fields of evolution and theoretical computer science that we're talking about today. Um, and this connection is not only in the service of evolutionary biology, it's also definitely in the service of computer science. Um, so for instance, artificial neural networks uh, have been inspired by biology. And I remember being told by computer scientists that uh, that, that field is of no use. And yet, uh, uh, here it is today, vastly outperforming 
um, other methods in some key uh, areas and supplying new questions for theoretical computer scientists to, to look at. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, there's no reason to think that this is the last inspiration from biology that computer science uh, will get. Uh, so I very much hope that this uh, connection between the fields will continue to be strengthened and that this bridge will expand more and more even to the point of creating a whole new mathematical way of understanding evolution. Okay, so a little bit about the meeting and our, our speakers. We, just, we, we had a humble goal of bringing uh, together people uh, and helping to initiate discussion. It's going to be a rather informal event. And we're extremely delighted to have three uh, uh, notable guests from abroad. Uh, first, Christos Papadimitriou, uh, who doesn't uh, need uh, much introduction in this uh, crowd. Uh, but there may be a few biologists uh, in the audience. So I'll mention that Christos Papadimitriou has been one of the leading fig figures uh, of theoretical computer science and has made enormous contributions to computational complexity. Um, and what's especially relevant for today to interdis interdisciplinary connections of theoretical computer science uh, to other fields, notably economics, evolution, and neuroscience. And he has won, of course, uh, enormous recognition for his work, including the John von Neumann Medal, the uh, European Association for Theoretical Computer Science Award, the Gödel Prize, the Harvey Prize of the Technion just uh, a few months ago, uh, and, uh, and other highly prestigious awards, and he's a fellow of the ACM and a member of the National Academy of Science and the National Academy of Engineering. Uh, we'll hear from him uh, a bit later this morning about evolution and machine learning. Uh, Leslie Valiant, our uh, uh, other keynote speaker, uh, also requires absolutely no introduction here. Um, I'll just mention I first heard of, of Les in a class at Princeton that was taught by Nick Pippinger. And uh, Nick uh, is, is himself a, a true giant. And so when he said in class, after teaching a few examples, that it's incredible how much this person, uh, Les, has contributed to the field, uh, this statement coming from Nick was something I could never forget. So I've been very delighted later to realize that Les himself was so interested in evolution uh, and the evolution computer science connection. Uh, Les is a fellow of the Royal Society, a fellow of the Association for the Advancement of uh, Artificial Intelligence, a member of the National Academy of Sciences, and uh, uh, among his awards, he's been uh, uh, the winner of the Nevin Lina Prize, the ACM Turing Award, the European Association for Theoretical Computer Science Award, and, and, and other uh, very prestigious uh, awards. And he will talk at the end of the day uh, about evolution as learning. Uh, our first guest from abroad uh, is Lee Altenberg. Uh, Lee is a very dear college in evolutionary biology, the evolutionary theory, and he's a rare scientist in our field because he both has uh, exceptionally broad knowledge of evolutionary theory um, from the classical results until today. And, and together with that, he has this never-ending desire to keep pushing the envelope on what we know. Uh, and we have mavens in our field that know a great deal, but don't necessarily expect that there's much more to uh, be known. And Lee is very different and uh, is fully aware of the fact that uh, there are absolutely fundamental questions left open. And he's not at all afraid of, of discussing uh, those things. And he's, he's all the more special for today's workshop because he offers this perfect blend of evolution and computer science, uh, being an evolution biologist in a computer science department. Uh, so we'll ha all have, uh, a lot to learn from his talk uh, today. Uh, some of Lee's notable work in our field includes uh, uh, establishing evolvability and modularity as fundamental topics of investigation, and uh, his unification uh, and generalization of modifier models. Um, um, we're also very fortunate to, to have uh, several truly outstanding researchers from Israel uh, to talk to us today on the biological side including Arnon Lotem, a professor here at Tel Aviv University and the head of the School of Zoology, who has been extraordinarily creative and productive in his investigations of animal behavior, which combine the empirical and theoretical perspective. And he's, again, uh, a very special person for this gathering because of, of his great comfort in connecting the theoretical and the empirical, the computer science and the biological approaches and he's published nearly 100 articles, many in some of the most prestigious and leading journals in our field. And aside of uh, Muli's support and Sabrina's help, 
uh, which we uh, very greatly appreciate. Uh, this day only took place uh, because it was organized under Anon's uh, guidance and sage advice. Uh, Lila Hadani, who is also a professor here in Tel Aviv uh, University, uh, is a mathematician who works in evolutionary theory, uh, and she's studied the diverse range of fascinating topics from the evolution of sex and recombination to the evolution of mutation rates to the evolution of cooperation. Uh, she's a leader in the area of investigation of responsive mutation and recombination rates and has published many papers in some of the most prestigious uh, uh, and leading journals in biology on these important topics. Uh, Yoav Ram did his PhD with Lilach and his postdoc with Mark Feldman at Stanford uh, University. And he's recently joined the IDC in Herzliya, not far from here. Uh, Yoav works on the evolution of mutation rates among else and he, he's a, another perfect uh, blend of evolution and computer science uh, here today uh, who can contribute a lot to this bridge, uh, being a an evolutionary biologist and a faculty member in computer science. And finally, uh, our first uh, speaker for today, Tzachi Pilpel, is the Ben May Professorial Chair in the Department of Molecular Genetics at the Weizmann Institute of Science, uh, and he regularly produces absolutely fascinating work in evolution using both the experimental and the theoretical approaches, focusing on gene regulatory networks and their evolution and the grammar of the genome language, among other things. Uh, he's published numerous papers in highly prestigious journals in the field and has won 25 scientific grants, including highly competitive ones like the ERC. Um, so without further ado, uh, uh, we'll, we'll start with a talk by Tzachi on uh, mutation rates. Yes, right. 